The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may attain what you promise, make us love what you command, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord spoke to Moses, <clears throat> saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel, and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. With justice you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not, shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate in your heart any one of your kin. You shall reprove your neighbor, or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people. But you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a lawyer, asked him to question, to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? He said to him, they said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the spirit calls him Lord saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. morning. I thought this might be a good day to talk about prophets a little bit. Prophets are generally thought of as people who make predictions. A couple from 1876 I'd like to point out to you. The first was made by Sir William Preece, who was head of the British Post Office. He said, the Americans have need of the telephone, but we do not. We have plenty of messenger boys. Also in 1876, George, General George Armstrong Custer told a news reporter, there aren't enough Indians in the world to defeat the 7th Cavalry. I guess we know how that turned out. In 1903, the president of the Michigan Savings Bank once advised Horace Rackham, who happened to be Henry Ford's lawyer, not to invest in the Ford Motor Company. He said, the horse is here to stay, but the automobile is just a novelty, a fad. It'll pass. And in 1939, film critic Russell Maloney described a new movie in the newspaper column as displaying no trace of imagination, good taste, or ingenuity. He said, it's a stinkeroo, and it'll be an utter failure. That movie was The Wizard of Oz. Probably more on point, in 1967, social scientist David Reisman stated that if anything remains more or less unchanged, it will be the role of women in our society. Scientists are now predicting human level artificial intelligence by 2030 and maybe sooner if the bar keeps dropping. 
Obviously, all the predictors are not prophets. But that what picture comes to mind when you hear the word prophet? Most of us visualize a wild-haired, bearded man wearing tan, tattered robes and sandals, some of whom are carrying signs that read, the end of the world is near. Some of you could also be picturing a tan robe, be sandaled figure that's staring at his Apple watch as it gives him the message that reads, this just in, breaking news, the end is very, very near. Still another portrayal of a prophet is a sad looking tan robed man who's standing on the side of the road right before a hairpin turn. His sign reads, the bend is near. I once had to assure a young Sunday school student that Carrie the Samsonite was not a prophet in the Old Testament. None of these images or predictors or, car or, or cartoon prophets comes very close to describing a true biblical prophet. If you happen to visit the cave on the island of Patmos where St. John wrote the book of Revelations and you by chance happen to look up at the ceiling of the cave, you will see three huge cracks in the granite. If you ask about them, your priest guide will explain to you that these were created by God's voice as he spoke to St. John. Such is the power of that voice. The major difference between you and I and the prophets of old is that you and I have been witnesses to the callousness and cruelty of man, but our hearts try to obliterate these memories to calm our nerves and to silence our consciences. In sharp contrast, a single act of injustice, a single act of cheating in business, exploitation of the poor detected by a prophet's heart and mind is a disaster, a death blow to existence, a catastrophe, a threat to the whole world. Hasidic scholar Abraham Heschel has noted that a prophet is a man who feels fiercely God has thrust upon him a burden on his soul of such weight that the prophet is bowed and stunned at man's fierce greed. Frightful is the agony of man. No human voice can convey its full terror. Prophecy is the voice that God has lent to this silent agony, a voice to the plundered poor, to the profaned riches of the world. It is a form of living, a crossing point of God and man. God himself is raging in the prophet's words. The prophet's word is a scream in the night. While the world is at ease and asleep, the prophet feels the blast from heaven. It is common to characterize a prophet as a messenger of God, to differentiate him or her from fortune tellers, seers, and ecstatics. Yet he or she is much more than that. He or she is a person who stands in the presence of God who stands in the counsel of the Lord, who is a participant in the counsel of God. So he or she is a counselor as well as a messenger. From a prophet's mouth, the world uh, can hear the words of the invisible God and be, may become audible. Knowing all this, you can begin to appreciate the terror that must have in, invaded the hearts of the Pharisees when they felt the presence of God in Jesus' voice the same presence that they had felt in hearing the words of Amos, Elijah, Elisha, Deborah, Isaiah, and Jeremiah. The man, prophet, perhaps Messiah, who had come to them to fulfill the law was utterly orthodox and an absolute threat to the Jewish authority. The Pharisees had wanted to prove that they were smarter than the Sadducees, and they had presented Jesus with a loaded question in order to discredit him. But just as he had when tempted by the devil, Jesus quoted scripture in his response. And then using the oldest rabbinic tactic known, he answered a question with a question of his own. He reduced their smartest lawyer to the rank of legal understudy. Here, Shema, here. Shema Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord with all your God, with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. This includes your finances. A prayer required by daily for all Jews. Having used the Shema against them, the words of the great Rabbi Hillel rang in their ears. 
when once challenged by a man to teaching the Torah while standing on one foot, Hillel quickly replied, that which is despicable to you, do not to your fellow. This is the whole Torah. The rest is commentary. Having soundly defeated the question posed by the Pharisaic lawyer, Jesus then asked, how can David's descendant be greater than David? This was the question that left them speechless. Only God could have solved such a conundrum. What is surprising is the similarity of our behavior to that of the Pharisaic lawyer in this story. Most of us have posed questions to God that were intended to bring God down to our level. If the creation of the world caused the suffering of one child, was it worth it? God, if you can't save my mother, child, spouse, what's the point in believing in you? Why is the world such a terrible place, even after your son has walked among us? All of these in questions are intended to end our obligations to God and to grant us permission to justify anything we might want to feel or to do. But mostly they eliminate our obligation to listen, Shema, to the words of God and to follow his will. So what does continuing an honest dialogue with your Lord do for you in the presence of adversity and pain? What good could possibly come from it other than giving you, us, comfort, companionship, meaning, purpose, strength, hope. Other than those things, I can't think of anything. Amen. The prayers of the people are form six, found on page 392 in the Book of Common Prayer. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Wayne, our provisional bishop, for Kristen, our bishop-elect, for Ken, Nettie, and Wendell, our assisting bishops, and for all bishops, for Darren and Martha, our priests, and for all deacons and the ministry of the baptized, for all who serve God and his church. We pray also for those whose needs are closely linked with ours and for those who suffer from any sickness, grief, or distress, especially those on our parish prayer list, including Alex, Bunny, Emily, Jacob, Jane, Jen, Joan, Lana, Libby, Lily, Mary, Nancy, Pat, Penny, Ryan, Rod, Tasha, and all those affected by natural disasters and human tragedies, especially remembering the people of the Ukraine and the Holy Land at this time. We pray for the first responders and the aid and relief efforts that continue there and around the world, as well as all our shut-in parishioners and their caregivers. I invite your own names and concerns offered either silently or aloud. We pray especially for peace in our homes and around the world, remembering those who have lost their homes and families to violence here or abroad, as well as those who serve and protect our own freedom, especially Harrison, Matt, Becky, Jennifer, Steve, Philip, and Tony, for their safety as well as the just use of the power that is placed in their hands. Let us pray together for our Stephen ministry saying, Risen Lord, you have commanded us to love one another and commissioned us to make disciples. Help us as we live into the fullness of your call to new life. Give us wisdom and clarity as we prayerfully consider your call to serve and seek the most effective ways to bring your healing love to those in need. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. 
I invite your own thanksgivings, offer either silently or aloud. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of God which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you, those you love, and remain with you this day, this season, and forevermore. Amen.